Folks, it's happened again. A series of perhaps questionable life choices have led you here. It's the Up All Night with Bob show. I'm Bob. Coming up in just a minute, uh, my interview with uh, Ryan Belleville from Working Moms, my lovely and talented companion, life partner, love partner, sidekick, co-host, Annie Abrams. How are you? I'm good. good. I'm good. Is uh, Andy in the frame? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he's here. Oh, there he is. Andy just had a bath. Andy just has a bath. He smells... Oh. Ah, he smells like lavender. <laughs> With this shame out for the world to see. Um, later on, Annie and I, California's own, Tarzana Born, Annie Abrams and I are going to be playing round two of Name That Canadian. Please, stick around. We're here for a while. Ladies and folks, my guest tonight plays mm -hmm. Lionel on the hit series Working Moms, heading into production on its final season this summer on Netflix and CBC. In addition to being one of Canada's funniest stand-ups, he has appeared in a number of series and films, including Satisfaction, Life on a Stick, National Lampoon's Going the Distance, and Almost Heroes, the series he starred in and co- we're going to get through this. He starred wow. in and co-created alongside wow. his brother, Jason Belleville. Please welcome live and in the clubhouse today, my goodness... It's Ryan Bellow. Yay! Please sit down. Our first, sit our down. First live live yes. person. It was the least I could do. First of all, I want to say thank you for giving me. I'm gonna say too much coffee in this cup. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> now I know. How, no, 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 no. Now I know how you afford the lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were like, what's the least amount of coffee we could give you that's still some amount of coffee? Uh, just right. just about an hour before we uh, started today, uh, just uh, some terrible news down the comedy pike. I know. Uh, the loss of, uh, Gilbert, Gilbert Gottfried. Gottfried. A lot of people don't do squid humor. I like a good squid joke. <laughs> I always remember that because I was in his. I can't even remember what the joke was from one of his very first, just for laughs, like 1984 or something. It was so long ago, and all right. I, I vividly just remember him, the crowd is not into it, and he's like. A lot of people don't do squid humor. <laughs> and every time uh, Jason and I think of Gilbert Godfrey, we think of, I don't like a good squid joke. <laughs> and uh, and then I, I met him a few times at Just for Last, but the first time I met him, I was like, hey, uh, Gilbert, I always say, like, a lot of people don't do squid humor. Because I was like, oh, yeah, I said that, didn't I? That was a crazy time. Yeah. Before we go forward, as they say, let us go back. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you're all right. So I met you in two thousand one, mm -hmm. um, and you had been doing comedy for about how long at that point? Well, when did I start doing comedy? I showed up at the Loose Moose Theater in Calgary in the mid nineties. I want to say nineteen ninety four. That early? Yeah. How? But maybe how old were you like sixteen or something? Fifteen. Oh my god. Fifteen. So, uh, and I started doing comedy there, and then I started street performing at sixteen. And then uh, I started traveling, and then when I was 18, I just took off. I was, I was applying to theater schools. I got accepted to Mount Royal College for acting. Uh, I'd already done, like, Shakespeare in the Park, and, like, so they were, which was done through Mount Royal College. So they are like, Ryan, you're in. And then I uh, had an audition booked for National Theater School in Canada, which is, like, the premier acting sure. school in Canada. Yeah. And I, I walked away from it. I don't know if I would have gotten in. I doubt I would have. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't uh, responsible enough. But I walked away and I just booked a trip and decided to travel instead. So now most kids go to their parents, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. No, you can't be an actor. You're never going to make any money. Your parents actually are actors, but you found a way to disappoint them anyway. Oh, well, like, yeah. <laughs> I joke about this in my act, though, but like growing up a theater kid in Calgary in the 80s was hard when, like, they, they you know, all the <laughs> hockey jocks right. are like, can you play hockey? I'm like, no, but I can sing every word to Les Miserables. Nice. And uh, so I was raised in theater. Then I did some commercials when I was a little kid. And, and then occasionally, like, there was a couple productions. I, I did Oliver when I was a kid. Uh, that my parents were like, do you want to audition for this? I'm like, sure. Singing, dancing. I loved right. it. And um, I was into theater, but I don't know. I liked, uh, I had a lot of disdain for like the process of theater and right. I still do to a certain extent did you find it I always and, and, and I'm not, not the art form sorry just to clarify just the sitting around having to wait 
for some unseen presence to offer you an opportunity to maybe work. That really bugged me a bit when I'm like... Just the business side of it more than more so than... Sure. I think, I think so. if you, you know, for folks who maybe, you know, you took a real leap at a very, very young age, much younger than, I mean, I didn't even try and get into TV writing until I was nearly 30. Right. So, right. Uh, I mean, here you are on stage at 15. Did you... Jason was the same, right? Like, because Jay went for, went to school for creative writing. He, uh, and then he did some producing at Country Music Television. And I got him into Loose Moose Theater. Like, I'm, you're a funny guy, come start doing comedy. And, and a it took lot off. of really funny comics who are still working today. Oh my gosh! Came yeah. out of came out of loose wounds. So just throw 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 a few names. Out. Um. Well, I mean, everybody cites Bruce McCullough, Mark McKinney from Kids in the Hall. Sure. Um. There's uh. I'm trying to think. There's writers that came out of well, loose moves. There's. I mean, the, 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 I just the sort of narrow band that occurs to me is because when I so when I first saw you start performing it was in yeah. 2001 so, at the Rivoli in Toronto. Right. And a, there was a, I think a fair amount of folks who had come out of that. Levi McDougal. Levi McDougal, who's a writer on Conan, or like works with with uh, Conan's company now too. Yeah. Um, uh, myself, uh, Rebecca Northern, who's one of the biggest kind of independent theater comedy producers For in sure. in Canada. Yeah. Uh, well, God, her, her show's been on in New York, and she's had lots of runs with her show, Blind Date. Um, Albert Howell, who was a writer on The Tonight Show. Oh, I forgot um, Albert came out of Calgary. Yeah, and then there's, there's, other, there's other people like Norm Hiscock, uh, who was on King of the Hill, and a sure. bunch of other stuff. Like, Parks they, and Rec. Parks and Rec. They kind of yeah. like went through a lot of people. Like There's generations, the Kids in the Hall generation... My generation, Andrew Fung from uh, Kim's Convenience. Right. So um, when you guys landed in Toronto, uh, what? How long did it take you to sort of find your community there? And was that was that the Rivoli and, and sort of the Alt Dot Room? Yeah, I think we just were out all the time doing shows. Jason, Jason included, which like went out. I ran with uh, some of his friends, yourself, and people from the Film Center, uh, stand up people, improv people. Improv not as much because like there was Second City. There was all these Loose Moose people who came. Loose Moose was very famous internationally, but in Toronto, it was all Second City improv. Very, very specific way of doing improv. Yeah. And there was kind of this clash. Now it's all mixed up. Like they all kind of do. They're all. They're all. They've blended over the years, but there was a weird time there for right. a while. Was that because? You know, let's talk about that for a second because I was looking at the, the the interview I did with Mark uh, McKinney a couple of weeks ago, and there's mm -hmm. one thing that I wanted to press him on that I wish I had, right? Because he talked a lot about the difference between writing for kids in the hall versus writing on Saturday Night Live and the different kind of right. sketch styles. Right. And I sort of think I know what he's talking about, but I'm always interested, like, to hear sort of a comedy's insider version of the differences between, like. The differences between, say, UCB and Groundlings, or Second City and Loose Moose, or you know, I mean, it's, it's hard to kind of ref it's, define. Maybe it's but. hard to nail. It's hard to nail down because there's people who go like, "There's short form improv, and there's long form." So short form is often shorter scenes, or maybe games, and then there's long form improv, which is like a herald or an improvised musical. For me, it's just right. there's good improvisation and there's bad improvisation. Like Loose Moose is a. Sh tended to be a short form place, but it was more theatrical. Right. Like, we didn't usually get suggestions. You'd get maybe a couple suggestions a show, whereas then you'd come out east, and they would get multiple suggestions for every scene, and they're like, well, how else will they know it's improvised? Right. And then the Loose Moose motto was like, well, who gives a shit what they think? Yeah. <laughs> it is improvised. Yeah. And if they think we wrote this garbage, then, yeah, right. then like, it, it doesn't really matter, and they're, they're just trying to come up trying to show how clever they are. Yeah. And that's not what improv should ever be about. It should be about a connection on stage and being open to a moment between two performers and then where does it go from there. And Keith Johnson, like, he would, like, direct us or make scenes go very weird to a point where some of the audience hated it. Uh, he was not aiming for comedy. Right. Because he also knew that inherently, if it's an improvised, spontaneous show, it's going to be funny. It's changed over the years, so it's it's much different now. But the original idea was that you're we're trying to yeah get rid of all the things that people the barriers people put in the way to spontaneity. So uh, the the classic ones were like 
uh, it's like the yes anding, which is sure. kind of universal, but agreeing on ideas, like acknowledging your offer and accepting it and moving on as opposed to you saying, here's a cup of coffee. This isn't a cup of coffee. This is like my dad's keys to his Chevy. Right. Immediately you shut down the offer. Scene doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Loose Moose had a great thing back in the early days called a horn for boring. So they would have judges and they would have horn scenes. If it was absolutely savage to a young ego and most places got rid of it because it was like it would hurt our feelings yeah, like right. yeah but the scene sucks so bad get it off stage <laughs> please horn the scene i remember my friend john markey who you know oh i love john uh god bless you john markey he's I'm the guy he got me into loose moves theater and him and his friend drove up and they, they were talking about an idea that they wanted to try on stage which you should never do in improv right. they were brand new they got on stage at theater sports uh and they, they challenge the other team to a scene with a microphone. They're so excited. His buddy gets on stage, and then uh, one of them gets a microphone and goes, Timmy, this is God. And the other one just goes, I can't hear you. I'm deaf. <laughs> and then there's a solid five seconds, a solid five seconds of nothing, just silence. And then you see a judge raise a horn and go, hey, and the lights come down. But that's the perfect example of like, these guys messed up. Yeah. The scene shouldn't go on. Yeah. We don't want to see them flounder anymore. Kill I wanted, it. You know, uh, Brett and I were talking, Brett Button and I were talking last mm -hmm. week. I don't think it made the cut, but we were talking about some of the early mm -hmm. days at Yucks. And I used to go see like amateur comics. Oh, yeah. You know, obviously. And, and uh, uh, open mic nights. This would be like 88, 89. <laughs> And they 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 did have these monitors all around the stage, old four by three TVs. Yeah. Showing it's like old footage of just planes <laughs> into the ground. Yeah. And we were sort of talking about the cruelty of it. But it, but then at the same time, it's yeah. like who you know, you're paying your two drink minute minimum. You may have paid to get into the place right. for all you know. Why do I? I don't want to watch something terrible for six no. more minutes. <laughs> and there's just this crazy assumption that what you say is going to be good, or you're going to get it right. Right. Uh, it's a craft, and I mean, this is one of the things I learned in the early days of Loose Moose. And I do think, as a company, they were much more savage and hard on people. And they gave people a thick. After every show, there was notes. First time I went to a, a show, a theater show, or improv improv show. And there was no note session afterwards. I was like, right. what's going on? Nobody has notes on the train wreck that was that? Right. That just happened for 90 minutes? This was where? Not a, not, not a loose boost. Every, every, every other improv company I ever right. went to. Right. I mean, they might have, uh, they just didn't do notes. Yeah. Whereas people would come out and say, hey, you, like, you totally screwed up this offer because you did this and that. Right. You alienated the audience when you did this, or you missed opportunities, or, right. the, hey, the, these guys were judging. Why didn't you horn that crappy scene? They were dying. Like, things like that. It's the missed opportunities, I think, that would haunt me. And I never, I just out of pure fear, I never, I never really did any improv or stuff. It's great, though. I really lack skills. But I, I still remember your first stand-up <laughs> set. I still remember. You know, I, mean, I did a set, I did a set at the Ripley mm -hmm. a handful of times. I liked it. It wasn't, I liked you know, it. I, 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 and I. Mr. Big Mini. I had a bit about that's right. <clears throat> so I had two bits that I that I you you've you've not forgotten over the years. <laughs> Cash well, jewelry, cashulery. <laughs> one was that all the candy, none of the candy bars wanted to be what they were anymore. Yeah. Mr. Big, Mini, yeah, Twi new cookie list Twix. We yeah. took the cookie out because cookies are for pussies. That yeah. was the yes. thing. And um, and then the and of course uh, 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 Ron. No, what was the name of the? Uh, I don't remember because it w it was a reference I didn't know as a non Ontario guy. Oh. But, uh, Local jeweler uh, <laughs> Oliver, whose his name is going to escape me, I'll, I'll throw up. I will buy your, your gold. But uh, yeah, I'll buy your jewelry. Cash jewelry. <laughs> my, my bit was does he want to be robbed? Yeah. Because he would stand in front of the store <laughs> and say, We've got nothing but cash and jewelry. Inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're drowning in cash and jewelry in here. Cash, jewelry, cash jewelry. Yeah, thank you. Cash jewelry. I always, yeah. See, I liked yeah. it. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. You know what I found, and I, I don't think I'm the first person to ever say this, but, and I think this is just a personality thing. Having done it, I mean, I literally, I just, right. I may as well say I've never done it because there's no, it's, you do it six or seven times, you're just dipping your toe in the water. But I felt like if I did well, it made me a, that much happier. Right. And if I didn't do so well, it made me this, this much more unhappy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's still, um, 
there's still that for sure. But but it's also like I've done thousands of shows now, and I'm like, do I? I never really give too much of a shit. Like shit with the. Right. Do we swear on this? Is this for oh, TV? Yeah. So I never give too much of a horse's. <laughs> no, just kidding. I, I never give too much of a shit what what the audience really thinks. Like, but I get frustrated sometimes when you'll do a you'll do a set. You'll do jokes that you've done a bunch of times. And suddenly it just kind of falls flat or there's something weird or they're so hammered. Like I was just in Calgary right. and the show was fine, but the crowd was so drunk. Yeah. So drunk. And a lot of them were, and I could literally seem like passing out halfway through my show. People are falling asleep because they're so drunk and like interrupting the whole time. And, you, you know, like I got off stage. They had a, de like they had a decent time. Uh, the crowd was like, wow, that was good. Like, it was still, it was a good show. And the drunk people had no clue that they were disrupting as much. Right. But I just walked, I went to bed that night going, ugh, you feel like crap because you're like, what, why am I even doing this? Like, right. what am I, and then the next night, everyone was there, packed house. People listened and were like, great. And you're like, oh, this is like a, a nine to 10 out of 10 show. And yeah. you walk away for like walking on clouds. It's or just going back to Toronto in the sort of the early 2000s for me, because I just want to mm -hmm. shout out a couple of folks. Sure. Uh, uh, a couple of women in the comedy community who really kind of kept that whole scene going. Or yeah. Just, uh, uh, Zoe Rabnett. Who, Zoe Rabnett, course, amazing. Uh, uh, God bless you, Zoe, if you're out there. Uh, who ran the, uh, the Alt Dot. And, yep, uh, she booked the Alt Dot, and then she went on to uh, basically run all of the Just for Laughs and the programming and all the Canadian side, international and Canadian side. Of performers that just relax. Yeah. A I huge think, uh, advocate for a huge for... unsung hero in the in the Canadian comedy. Well, not unsung necessarily. I but agree. Sung, sung by the right people, but I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, like her and Ben Miner, who runs uh, the Canadian or ran the Canadian Serious XM channel. The two of them did more for Canadian comics than anybody else. And you're going to talk about Joanna Downey as well. That was who I was going to ask great. about next. Ran that amazing open mic at Spirits. Every Wednesday, it was like pros would show up again. Talk about like. People like uh, uh, Robin Williams and people like that, would they'd be there in town. They'd come to Spirits, hang yeah. out, and she'd literally just talk to the crowd. And she would always put a new person on a show. Right. Always, always. And it was a, a total LGBT-friendly, before that was a thing, it was, yeah. it was an open, friendly environment. It was not an easy room, but if you did well there, the crowd loved you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a great, great comedy room. It was. It was a fun room. Monday, uh, uh, the alt dot was Monday nights, and what night was the Spirits night? It was Wednesday, but it was the fact that it was an open mic. She would always give some spots to, like, if, if you're there hanging out drinking beer, a lot of hammered comics because you were just there to have drinks, yeah. and she'd go, like, hey, you want to do a spot? Yeah. Of course I do. But uh, I love the fact she would always give a new person a spot. Because you're in L.A., and you see these shows, and it's a lot of, like, not open micers, a lot of new people in right. this hip room, right. and some are okay and some aren't, but you don't see a lot of people going up for their very first time to do sets. Because right. people are like, oh, well, why are we going to give a brand new person a spot? Because it's like, that's part of running a show. So, uh, when, what year did you first, what year did you first come out to, to Los Angeles? I'm really bad at all this stuff. Let me just prep. Well, I'm going to say, I, 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 I'm really good, I'm good with years. If nothing else, I'm good with years. I'm, I'm going to say this was around 2004, 2005. Yeah, that sounds about right. Like, because I was I was always dual citizen, I didn't want to move to Toronto even, originally. But my ex-girlfriend at the time was like, you have to leave Calgary. You can't just street perform and right. then come back to Calgary when you're not doing that. And so I went to I went to Toronto because of her. And then I had friends in Toronto who were like, you, you're an American citizen. Why aren't you going to America? I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess. So I started going to pilot season. I think 2003 is when I first went and booked... Uh, stuck in the Suburbs, which is a Disney Channel thing I did with our uh, friend Taryn Killam, right. who I, I'm still buddies with, and uh, I think it was around then. That yeah. was like my, and that was my first pilot season. Or that no, sounds, second pilot season. That sounds about right. You and Jason had a little apartment on Franklin, yes. right, near, right near Runyon Canyon. Yeah. And I wasn't living here. I, was, this is, I would just come out and visit. And, right, yeah. Uh, but the thing I remember about that, and also, yeah, I remember, I remember Taryn being around. Taryn Killam, of course, who was yeah. there on uh, SNL and has done a million funny things. One of Taryn's more memorable bits on SNL was an impression of um, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> and he he would do this at poker, and you would play Pepper, his, his sidekick Pepper. This <laughs> is uh, Pepper. <laughs> can you do? Because I can't do Taryn's. No, Brad Pitt. I can't I don't do know anybody who really can. No, no um, 
because his I couldn't do it either. But he's always like talking like this. Brad Pitt goes like this. Uh, uh. Anyways, I can't do the impression, but I was Pepper, the, the failed clone, <laughs> who would just sit next to him and do the side of He'd be like, hey, uh, 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 think about Fight Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. <clears throat> and then Pepper would just be like, eh. <laughs> and I'd have Drool go, <laughs> That was a reoccurring like game. And I feel like occasionally he would solicit something from Pepper as well. Yeah. Yeah. Pepper, do you want, uh, uh, Pepper, what do you think of this? <laughs> I think all Pepper could say was Pepper. Yes, I, I feel like that was the running gag. Hard to believe that you didn't uh, you didn't follow him onto the show at the, as a. Uh, I want to see your best impression. Okay, yes, Mr. Michaels. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird about impressions. I still remember uh, Bill Hader's when he first went on the show, and oh, did. Pacino. Yeah, the Pacino. Oh. It's like it was the funniest. Yeah. And yet, you know, you've heard so many people do Pacino since. Yeah. But at the time, it was kind of, it's kind of, it's always a revelation when you hear oh, somebody stuck nail down it here, for, right yeah. for the first time. Starts down here. Oh, why is up here? <laughs> um, but like then, walking. like, like the first time I heard somebody do Christopher Walken, oh, I couldn't even believe it. You're like, that's amazing. You know, like, oh my God, that's amazing. And now on SNL, they you're literally do the Walken family <laughs> where everybody's doing Chris Walken, which is great. Yeah. There was a, uh, uh, but talking about like good impressions, I went to SNL uh, to see a taping, and on the weekend update, Fred Armiston did an Ira Glass impression. Oh my god! And yes. he was just sitting there. He's like, uh, "This, he, uh, this American Life." Like, okay, uh, step one or uh, chapter one on the show, and he broke down all the stuff. <laughs> I'm crying because I was a huge This American Life fan. Yeah. I'm crying. I'm crying, and it it did not make the show because I saw it on the, I saw the, well, I went to the dress, dress rehearsal and I stayed yeah. for the regular show. I'm like, that got cut? How could that get cut? And they're like, yeah. because most people <laughs> don't know who Ira Glass is <laughs> or care. Uh, you, you had an Instagram just a few weeks ago that you shot in the comedy condo Explain, <laughs> explain to viewers what the comedy, what the what a con, what a comedy condo is first, and then you can tell me about the. Uh, well, a comedy condo is sometimes you get put up in a hotel, sometimes you get put up in a like a beautiful hotel at clubs, sometimes you get put up in a terrible motel at some clubs, um, and then sometimes you get put up in a comedy condo, which is a uh, usually an apartment or a condo that the club owners actually own, and then week to week, every week, another comics in there. Right. They've gotten a lot better over the years. There's been some pretty dicey ones. Yeah. Uh, this one is great. Like, uh, it has beautiful big screen television. I think they had an Xbox. They this had. Is, sorry, what city? This is one was in Edmonton. Okay. Which is a great comedy club. Great comedy club. They have a they have a club in Edmonton. They've one in Vancouver, Phoenix, uh, New Jersey, uh, Minnesota. They have a bunch. And they always run great clubs, and they have great condos. Um, but I got in there, and I opened the fridge, and there was just a... Uh, you talking about the garlic? There was like a Kirkland... You find weird stuff. It's like sometimes you'll find joints in the condo. Sometimes you'll find weird things. But all that was in the fridge was a Kirkland thing of minced garlic. Minced garlic. Like two About liters. A gallon size. Yeah, yeah, gallon size. Yeah. Of minced garlic. I'm like, who? What psychopath? <laughs> I was, yeah... I was trying to remember. I, I knew it was either uh, uh, garlic or, uh, in my memory, it was capers. But just something that something, you never need that much no, of, no, ever. No. Let alone on a on a on a two day. Uh, Who's going to Costco for just minced garlic? <laughs> Before we get to the next uh, bit, I also I want to uh, just uh, get a little uh, naked promotion in here. So, working right. moms, you're doing. Uh, you're working on that yes. season, season six. I want to say uh, they're shooting season seven. Oh, this is season seven this summer. Yeah, shooting. this okay. summer. So we're shooting season seven this summer. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been a great little, great little run. I don't know what's, all I know is I have table reads coming up. I haven't been officially told what dates I'm gone doing it, but. Don't know what, don't we know shoot. Lionel's arc for the season. Don't can't, know can't anything. Any, any cats out of the bag. Don't know anything How about it. That oh, and they're, they're, it's coming out on Netflix. I gotta look it up. May 20th. May, oh, no, 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 season, no. Season six is. Season six. I was going to look at this, sorry. Let me double check. Cause season six up on Netflix now. May 10th. Season seven coming. So season oh, season May, six May, drops May on May uh, May 10th on Netflix, right. and then we're shooting season seven this summer. All so. right. Season six of Working Moms, Netflix, May 10th. Yes. Season seven, shooting this summer. Mm -hmm.
time for a brand new segment on the show, built specially for you, Ryan Belleville, comedian. Are you ready? Finish. Finish the joke. First up, this is yes. a Joan Rivers joke. Joan Rivers joke. Your friend and mine. Love Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Mm -hmm. I threw her, I, I lifted her onto a piano, by the way. I didn't throw her onto a piano. Who hasn't? Yeah. <laughs> Back in the, yeah, you were for the gala, just for, for last. the gala, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Joan Rivers, I've had so much plastic surgery. When I die, they will donate my body to blank. Oh, uh... Ding, 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 I said no plastic, they'll ding, donate my body to... I can't remember. I remember the setup, but... Ding, 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 ding. Tupperware. Tupperware! Okay. I thought they were going to say, there's so much plastic surgery, they'll find my body floating on an island in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> no, that's no, no, not good. No, it's terrible. Tupperware, Tupperware. Um, uh, George Carlin, you ready? Okay. Two quick Carlin. The caterpillar does all the work, but... Uh, the butterf butterfly gets all the credit? Very close. Yeah. The, pub the publicity. Oh, the publicity. Uh, uh, second Carlin. It's called the American Dream because... Because it ain't fucking happening. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to be asleep. Oh, you have to, to believe it. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, damn it. Damn Sarah it. Silverman. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus is magic because he turned water into wine. I think he made... Do you know this one? No, uh, I think can't he remember. Made the statue? Do you know this one? No, what? This isn't a good no. one. Right, next time I'll work on these jokes. I'll pick What is it, jokes. though? What's the... The Sarah Silverman joke. Oh, Sarah Silverman. Uh, Jesus, is magic. Jesus is magic because he turned water into wine. I think he made the Statue of Liberty disappear in the 80s or something. It's oh, David, David Copperfield joke. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Roseanne Barr. This oh, my God. One, but this, is a, this is a classic Roseanne joke. Right, right. I'm not going to vacuum until... I have no idea. I never listened to Roseanne stand-up. No, I know, but, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit. I know. Throw Rose... a couple of curveballs. Hey, Roseanne, I'm not, I'm not vacuuming until somebody throws a $100 bill on the ground. I don't know. What was it? I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not vacuuming vacuum. until my ambient I'm not kicks vacuum in. Until Sears make one you can ride on. Oh right. Okay. All right. Joke. Classic not joke. Vacuum. Classic. All right. Yeah. All right. Now here, this is going to be easier. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Stephen Wright. A couple of Stephen Wright. Okay. Jokes. Here we go. These, I feel like you're gonna. They, you, nobody. All right. right. Epi, tight. Epigrammatic. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. I spilled spot remover on my dog. Now I don't know what to call him. Now he's gone. Now he's gone. Damn it. Um, damn it. Uh, I stayed up all night playing poker with tarot cards. I got a full house and. Uh, and I'm going to die in three years? What? I don't know. What was it? Four people died. Well, four people well, died. You're yeah. in the right area. Um, it's a small world. Uh, uh, I don't know. I can't. I don't know that one. It's a small world, but I. But I. I, I don't know. You don't know this one? No, but it looks bigger if you shave around it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small world, but I wouldn't want to pay it. Uh, pay, oh, I paint, <laughs> we still wouldn't want to paint it's it. It's a small yes. world, but I wouldn't want, I want to have to paint, paint it. it. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, one more. I used to work in a fire hydrant factory. Uh, there's so many dogs there? Or like, I don't know. You couldn't park anywhere near the Oh, place. God, <laughs> yes. Right. It's short. Couldn't get a single one right. Not a one. Not a one. I think you did. I think like, you got, no, you got, you got a couple, you got close. This is like, a, it's like going, what are you, Ryan? I'm a professional, uh, I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm a professional luthier. I make guitars. I've, d I've dedicated my life to being a luthier, making guitars. What do you, what do you, how, what do you think of a Fender guitar? Never heard of it. <laughs> what are they? What? Yeah, exactly. What are Fender guitars? Um... Oh, are there other comics, says Ryan Belvo? <laughs> 20 questions with Ryan Belvo. Yes. Here we go. Number one. Number one. Uh, within 5,000, what is the population of Belleville, Ontario? <sighs> within 5,000, the population of Belleville, Ontario is, is 45,000. You're there. Well, you're, you're within. 50,000. 50,000. 50, 50, Just about 50,000. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, number two, if, oh God, are we only at number two? Jesus Christ. If you had to be trapped on a desert island with any comic from history, who would it be? 
any comic from history. Like, Trapped Forever? I mean, it's you and this person, and that's it. Uh, I don't know. Like, forever? Sarah Silverman, maybe? Well, I was thinking, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking, you... like, uh, on, like, Tim Allen or uh, somebody who's kind of blue collar who can kind of get stuff done. Because I feel like humor... Who cares? Now you now you need to survive, and you need. I want I want the comic who's going to bring the the broadest skill set to the island. Right. So you you don't care for the fact that you're going to have you're stuck on an island with Tim Allen for the whole time. Like, I'm not saying there's any romance that's going to happen with me and Sarah, but I want that uh, uh, that opportunity. I I want to just be looking at Tim. No, that's true. That was a bad choice. And have, his punchlines. Huh? Huh? I don't want to be trapped on an elevator with Tim Allen. <laughs> Actually, he's very, his old stand-up no, was pretty funny. His old stand-up is very good. funny. Um, Scenario. Mm -hmm. It's 2022, and you, Ryan Belleville, are yes. a mere 21 years old. Instead of the desiccated husk you have become, <laughs> you are going into comedy. Is the road harder than it was in 2000 or easier? I, I don't know. I probably would have to get TikTok, more TikTok stuff. Yeah. I guess there's more comedy. There's but so you much don't comedy. Think it's changed dramatic. Some people will, will go on and on about how well it's just not the same. You don't do the clubs anymore, and everybody's being discovered online and blah blah blah. It's not that, but it, I mean, who wants to be? I mean, sure, people on TikTok make lots of money, but or can, but like, I want to be in front of an audience. That's all I ever, ever right. wanted to do is be in front of an audience. And there's right. more comedy than there ever was. You just can't sit on the same act for 20 years and not change it. I saw people. Don't, don't get me wrong, I love reason jokes. But like, I, when I started, there was guys who'd been around for 25 years who were doing the exact same act. Yes, I think I saw and that. And I, I watched them slowly become extinct. And it was interesting, or evolve, right. evolve or die. And that was just really just because of the sheer volume of comedy that was being broadcast on television now. Right? Pe people had, had comedy specials, people would tour forever, like, it, it, and now like, and then YouTube. Like, YouTube changed everything because people will watch all your YouTubes. So they'll be like, I'm going to go see somebody, and they'll watch a bunch of your YouTube right. and then come see you. Yeah. So if you start doing the same yeah, you're bits, screwed, you're you? kind of screwed. Yeah. yeah. Number seven, cancel culture, real or fake? Uh, people are overly outraged at stuff, uh, and also cancel culture is not really a thing. There's this boogeyman of cancel culture, which isn't real. Yeah. But there is outrage, uh, and it causes, like, a weird tension everywhere. And it can... Like, how many people are actually canceled right. that aren't, like, sex offenders? Right. That are, like, I'm talking about people who have been, like, canceled, but are not true, right. true like sex Harvey offenders. Right, like Harvey Weinstein has been canceled, but no. nobody's complaining But he, he wasn't canceled. He was sent to prison <laughs> because he's a rapist. You know what I mean? Like, yes. and he still has his Oscar. Like, yeah, no, true. So there's this weird, like, Lucy C.K. just won a Grammy. He did. So now, there were a lot, I mean, the only thing here's the only thing I'll say about it because I, I, I really I do agree with you, and I and I think most of the when the conversation that's being had around cancel culture or is there cancel culture or is right. there cancel or who's cancel or who's not cancel, it's all happening within the same little ecosystem of social media, and it has almost no bearing on the real world. Of right. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Number eight. What fighter won the very first UFC championship in 1993? Hoist Gracie. Dude. How did you know that? How did I know Hoist Gracie that he won the very first UFC championship, nineteen ninety three? I had to look it he up. He also won in nineteen ninety four as well. I asked because we haven't talked about it, but you're you're very you're a big fan of the MMA and the thing you do you do jujitsu. Yeah. Yes. Look at my ears. Yes. <laughs> I do cauliflower around the ears. No, I do love I love I love uh, jujitsu. I love martial arts, and I'm uh, a big fan of like UFC and all that sort of stuff. But it's uh, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Everyone should try it. No, 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 I agree. I w Everyone should try it. I'm a huge fan of it. Number 12, funniest mm -hmm. Leslie Nielsen movie. Naked Gun. Do you think Naked Gun is funnier enough. than Airplane? Yes. Oh, really? I think it is. I think, I'm not sure. I think upon like reviewing it not that long ago. Airplane is like back to back hilarious jokes. And I want to show it to my kids, but it's they, they both they all have a lot of like really serious sex jokes. Yeah, there's some a little bit, a little brief flashes of nudity. Nudity, yes. But there's a, um, yeah, I, I feel like I rewatched them both in the last like five years. 
Uh, number 13, you're 2009, 2009 Almost Heroes, my, roughly? Yeah, sounds yeah. about right. You're roughly 2009 series Almost Heroes, which aired on Showcase, RIP, mm -hmm. uh, in Canada. Shared the name with a comedy feature. Who were the stars of that feature? Oh, Chris Farley and uh, David Spade. Oh, very close. Oh, well, it's definitely Chris Farley. Yeah. If it was it's not... Chris Farley and a, a less popular Chris Farley pairing. Uh, it's not uh, Rob Schneider, is it? Oh, not... Uh, I can't remember. Who was it? Matthew Perry. Eggs, hot sauce, or ketchup? Hot, oh, hot sauce. It's tough. It's a tricky one. Uh, hot sauce. Number 16. We'll see if you can do this. What was the first production your mom, Donna Belleville, played in at Shaw Festival? Uh, I, I want to say Anthony and Cleopatra, but I don't know, because it would be... This would be the 1970s, so I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know. I, can't, I, I couldn't tell you what it was. I'd get in trouble with your mom if I could. So. Uh, Jack Daniels, seventeen. Jack Daniels or Woodford, Woodford, Woodford. Jack Daniels or Woodford. I can't even say Woodford Reserve. Wow. I was going to say Jack Daniels or Woodford or fancy. Or Jack Daniels or the fancy stuff. <laughs> Jack Daniels yeah. or Woodford. <laughs> no, you, it's better stay in. Jack, All this. Jack Daniels or, or Woodford Reserve. Wow, broadcast school paid off. <laughs> uh, Woodford Reserve, probably. I would like the I like the better stuff. I always liked the cheap stuff. I like the cheap stuff too. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cheap stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number eighteen, mm -hmm. Polly Shore or Carrot Top. Uh, Carrot Top. I feel like Carrot Top took a beating. And all he ever did was be a guy who's like, hey, what if I, wait, hey, what if I attach a, a, a sneaker to a rotary phone? Right. <laughs> huh? And people loved it. He's like, oh, here's a million bucks. He's like, uh, okay. Yeah. Number 19. This is a tough one. This is going to go a little old, little throwback here. We're uh -huh. almost done. Sullivan's Travels. I know you like the old comedies. Okay, yes. Which I appreciate, as yeah. you know. Uh, Sullivan's Travels or Duck Soup? Ooh. You know what? When I was like, younger, I would have said Duck Soup. But then I, I watched Sullivan's Travels a lot, and Preston Sergis was amazing. I wonder if I should go, because I've only seen Sullivan's Travels once. Certainly liked it. Don't recall, you know, really, people love Preston Sergis talking about how funny his movies yeah. are. And I, they are, they're very, they're charming, unbelievable, really well-made movies. I don't know that I'm laughing out loud. Like, I still laugh at Duck Soup. At Duck Soup, There's still you? bits in that that just are funny to me. I can't even remember... I mean, I liked the Two Mark vastly Brothers. different kinds of comedy. Right? Yeah. Sort of, it's like sketch. It's like comparing sketch comedy to a, yeah, a yeah, rom-com, yeah. right? Right. Uh, but yeah, I like Sol I think Sullivan's Travels is just a better movie. What's your go-to karaoke song? Uh, I'll sing a lot. I'll sing an almost anything. It used to be uh, uh, I Got You Under My Skin by Frank Sinatra. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen you sing that. What was the name of the trombonist who played the solo when I've got you under my skin? I'll give you a thousand dollars right now. Rusty T. <laughs> got any Melt Bernhard? Melt Bernhard. I used to play. I used to play trombone. There weren't a lot of there weren't a lot of trombone heroes growing up. There weren't a lot of trombone solos. No, there weren't. There were not a lot of except for Eight, occasionally when they're like beautiful eight or twelve bars in uh, I got you under my skin. I think eight. It's not that long. Yeah, makes sense. Trombone solos. We're talking about trombone solos. The show. Who's clicking? That's the show. <laughs> this one guy. Listen, eventually, <laughs> there to be, statistically yeah. speaking, yeah. there have got to be at least 100,000 me's out there. Yeah. Don't you think? It's of a course. big, big planet. It's a big, big I was thinking about this. This is, this is what I think is the ultimate anxiety of being a human being in 2022 growing up yeah. versus growing up in the 1980s, 1990s like I did is that it was very easy for me to be an individual. Very easy for me to be an individual. I got my ears pierced, right? That was a shocking thing in Calgary at the time. Right. I would like bleach blonde my hair, maybe wear an army surplus type punk shirt. Wear like, oh, what a crazy guy. I'd get oversized I'd pants and wear like uh, old uh, with giant uh, suspenders and weird stuff and like, like you were, were you wearing mork, morks pretty much yeah. pretty not far off though but i'm like people be like oh that guy he's weird he's kind of like silly yeah. like like that guy's got now, a personality that was too likely that if you know you might have noticed that less if you'd grown up in say toronto and calgary uh for sure and also i was on this i was doing street performance i, I look like a character and a performer and weird weird stuff but 
like it did not take a lot to be an individual back then. Like, hey, have you met Marcy? Who's Marcy? She's the chick with the pierced eyebrow. Right. Done. Right. Right. Oh yeah, Marcy. What about Daryl? Daryl, who's he? He's the guy who always wears the brown sweatshirt. Right. Whereas now, you're so consciously aware of how many people are doing different things all the time, and you say like, on TikTok, you could turn on TikTok and go, I wonder if there's any good sandwich videos. Yes. Yeah. There's nine yes, there million are. that you can yeah. scroll through right this second yeah. of a person just l making a sandwich and then a person reacting to a person making a sandwich. That's right. Right. that's it. So people are like, how am I going to be an individual now? Like, what makes me individual? I need to split my tongue. I need to get elf ears. Yeah. Uh, I need to get... No wonder everybody wants face tattoos now because it's the only way to kind of look a bit different. Yeah. Well, I, I remember when I, uh, when I first moved out here and I didn't really know anybody, I spent a lot of time on Twitter. On Twitter, oh my which goodness. is actually kind of, you know, I met, I met yeah. quite a number of people. I mean, Twitter was was a little more fun 12 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, at the time, um, I, I just remember thinking, you know, growing I grew up in Scarborough. I, I was, I didn't, and also I didn't, I didn't grow up around a lot of comedy people. Like, I didn't hang around comedians and stuff. So I always thought, oh, I've got kind of a funny point of view on the world. I've got a funny take. And then you get on Twitter and you're like, oh, there's 20 million people who are exactly, and actually they're, they're a little funnier. <laughs> or they make the same joke, and it's like sometimes people will make the same joke as yours, but worse. But it got out first, and you're like, "Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's the show." Ryan, hey, any questions for us? Um, when what channel will this be on? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, thank you very yeah. much for being here, I, buddy. I, I, I love it. Know, yeah, I just wanted to shoot and shoot the shit, and this is cool. This is a really cool little. Part stick. of the idea was that I would at least give me an excuse to start talking to people again. Yeah, because it's I, hard. I was, I was literally Mark and I, Mark McKinney, who did the first show, and was gracious enough to kind of help me out and do like we. It took us like three times because every time it was literally like just kind of right as we were coming yeah. out of Omicron, and I was just like, I can't talk. I don't want to talk. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, so, it's it's hard. It's hard to get back into it. It is hard to get back into it. So I, well, at one point I thought we'll we'll call it uh, learning to talk again with Bob. Anyway. Uh, uh, that's that. Thank you. We'll come back and join us again. Sometime. Bob, I would love to come back. <laughs> Say goodnight, Aaron. Goodnight, Aaron. Aaron. Who's Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> Say goodnight, Ryan. Goodnight, Ryan. Thank you to Ryan for coming. That was really uh, that was really a lot of fun. Hey, Annie, are you ready? I am so ready. I was born ready. We're to... gonna play. It's time for round two. Don't feel like you missed any show. Round one was last week. You got to go back. You got to watch them all the way through in order. It's like a Netflix show that way. Am I right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be hopelessly lost. It's time to play with California's own Tarzana born Annie Abrams. Name that Canadian. <laughs> All right, round two, here we go. I All feel right. like last week there were a couple of gimmies, so it's gonna be a little tougher this week. You know what, I, I'm ready, I am ready. All right, who is this? That is, that's, that's Samantha from Sex and the City? It is Samantha from Sex and yes. the City. <laughs> but I forget her name. Oh. Can I, did you know she was Canadian? I did not. Well, there you go, every week. Yes. Every week we, we oh, try Kim and Oh, Kim Cattrall. There you boom! Kim Cattrall, right out of the gate. That is John Jefferson. No, Josh. Jo <laughs> Josh. Ja George Josh, Jefferson. Josh. Josh Jackson. Yes, you're right. Is it Josh or Joshua? Oh, well, I matter. mean, I don't know. Well, either way, no, no. no. You I get call the, him. You I get. Ca oh, so I'm sorry. I call him Josh. <laughs> Number three. Oh, it's Sandra O. Oh. Nice. All right, this one's going to be challenging. Not Al Waxman challenging like last week, but yeah. possibly a little, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. Is, isn't that, um, see, now she, she played Wonder Woman? Oh, no, but oh. you're in the right territory. Okay. Uh, she was in a. This is where you're in. She was in a superhero movie. Oh okay. Um, oh, oh she she did play. Um, 
opposite. Uh, she, uh, she played Lois Lane. Oh yes, but boom. I, I don't that's okay. Her that's name. all right. Margot Kidder, Margo, the okay. late great uh, uh, Margot Kidder. Also in uh, uh, what else was Margot Kidder in? The Amityville Horror. Did you ever see the oh, Amityville yes, Horror? Oh yes, I love that movie. Yes, with uh, with James uh, James Brolin. Mm. Uh, Josh's dad. Oh, A lot of Josh's yes. on the show this week. Lots. Just joshing with Robin <laughs> Annie. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Last week, uh, you you uh, I don't want to say you complained, but you were you were thrown or at least uh, surprised that there were no gourds. Right. In the in the mix. Yes. Yes. This is a gourd. This is a gourd. This is a. This is. I'll tell you what. This is a. This is a variation on gourd. This is a ver gourd variant. <laughs> oh, you know, I don't know. No, that's all right. I didn't really expect you to. Gordy Howe. <laughs> <laughs> Started with a whimper and ended with a slow death rattle. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was excellent. And that's how we play Name That Canadian. Thank you very much. We're going to be back next week. Uh, please do like and subscribe. And if uh, this kind of thing appeals to you, share with your like-minded friends. We're a new channel. We're a new show. We could use all the support we could. We can. It would help, would help if I could talk. Good night. sun comes up, I think about you. A coffee cup, I think about you. I want you so. Something, something, I can't remember the next part. Something else, it's definitely not about farts. I want you so. Oh, that's as far as I go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, that's all for me. Something, something, I can't remember the next part. Something else, it's definitely not about farts. I want you so. Oh, that's as far as I go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, that's all for me.